Hi, this is Alden Witte, and I'm with Float Pod Therapies. This is Nick Janicki, owner of True Rest Float Spa. You're the queen wave. The queen wave. And also Float Pod Therapies. And in this video, we wanted to talk about something really important, which is about finding the location of your float spa. And uh, just some tips that we want to give out that are, are really valuable for finding the right location, because Nick has told me that he's wasted how much in the wrong location? Like... Two hundred fifty thousand dollars something. Anyway, so Nick, wh why is finding the location so important? Um, boom. I mean, this is kind of the, the big one. This is the first step, right? So, um, you know, everyone's looking around for the best location, and but what does that mean? I mean, you're not a yogurt store, so you know, you don't, you, you know, floating is a destination, right? right? So let's face it, it's like you don't need to be in the like most highest end strip center in your area. You just right. don't. And so we were paying ninety thousand dollars a month. Or, that'd be ridiculous. $90,000 a year in Scottsdale um, versus what we're paying now, which is half that and got lots, lots more. I mean, we'll get into that in a different video. But yeah. And so, um, you know, the key, I think, with finding a location is just finding the right square footage. And in another video, we'll get into kind of like the essential rooms that you need versus the non-essential rooms. So you can calculate square footage. Mm -hmm. But the key is, just step one, is to... Uh, just map out where you want to be, like a five-mile radius where you want to be, and just drive. Drive down every single road and get every single number for every single vacancy. And what you're going to see when you do that mm -hmm. is there's five or six you know, uh, leasing agents that are kind of controlling that whole area. And then what you're going to do is just call them all up and say, hey, I'm opening a new business. Uh, it's exploding, uh, but I'm going to need tenant improvements. I need money towards tenant improvements, and I'm going to need free rent. And kind of just feel it out. And so don't be the timid guy who's never done this before. You are qualifying them. They're not qualifying you. You are their client. You're giving right. them money every month. You're the client, right? right? Right. And so I think a lot of people kind of get timid when they first start doing this. And, oh, I don't know what to do. And your landlord's going to rake you over the coals if you, if you will let them. Yeah. Let's face yeah. it. So find a landlord that's willing to work with you. Step one. Okay. And so how important is it to... You know, talk to the other businesses in the area, just the ones that are close. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a big one. Is just yeah, see what's around you. Um, again, I wouldn't worry too much about high end traffic areas, but it doesn't hurt. But again, just qualify all this, start documenting it, and just go. Okay, you know this place is a lot more expensive, or this place is a little less expensive. This guy's willing to work with me. I mean, you have to qualify all this in terms of actual money. Don't don't make a decision based on emotion. And so don't go, oh, wow, this is the best coffee shop in town. I want to be there. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it going to make yeah. you more money by being there? Right. And so just make sure you get all your numbers down. And it may be that you find the, that middle. And I'm a big fan of the middle one. I don't go for the highest. I don't go for the cheapest. I go for that kind of perfect mm -hmm. middle, middle ground. Mm -hmm. And I do that with everything. When I'm uh, getting quotes for stuff, I usually don't go with the cheapest guy. And I usually don't go with the most expensive. I find kind of the middle Hmm. And would you say it's also, because I've heard you talk about this before, how important it is to, you know, even talk to the businesses around you. Say you're in a strip mall or something. You know, if everybody in the strip mall are a bunch of jerks and they don't even want to talk to you, just think of that as a warning sign. You know, if you're thinking about opening up a place, you know, if, and that's kind of, well, that kind of like... I, I understand what you're saying now. So, um, that's, that's a hard one. I mean, so, if, no, I know what you're saying. So, it, it's interesting. If you start talking to people and telling them what you do... So I'll go to places in Phoenix and talk about floating, and I get this weird, like, <laughs> floating, that sounds so weird, kind of attitude to, like, everyone in the complex right. might want to not want to be there. Right. And so the new complex we went to, we talked to people about it, it was, wow, that sounds amazing. Right. And so it's, there's, it's I don't know what, vibe. it's, it's a different vibe, it's, yeah. it's, you know, there's pockets of different vibes. Right. I don't know how to quantify that, but yeah. th that's a true thing. I yeah. Mean, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you might not th think that this is a big deal, but I would just say do it. Just, yeah. just do it. Just go talk do to people. Do your research. I mean, you're marketing anyway, so you need to do that anyway. Like I said, you should be talking to every single vacancy within a five-mile radius of where you want to be right. for all intents and purposes. Like, do the research. Right. I mean, three months, two, three months of just finding your location because you're going to be stuck there for a long time. That's true. That's true. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching this video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.